So, let's take a look at day 25. What is day 25? Day 25, Sea Cucumber. This is it, the bottom of the ocean trench, the last place the slay keys could be. Your submarine's experimental antenna still isn't boosted enough to deck the keys, but they must be here. All you need to do is reach the seafloor and find them. At least you'd touch down on the seafloor if you could. Unfortunately, it's completely covered by two large herds of sea cucumbers. And there isn't an open space large enough for your submarine. You suspect that the Alps must have done this before, because just then you discovered the phone number of a deep sea marine biologist on a handwritten note taped to the wall of a submarine's cockpit. Tonglebit, thank you for the raid. Thanks very much. Delvium, hi. How was your stream, Toggle? Hope you had a good time. Frobito, thank you for the follow. An AOC advisor, <laughs> Perk Inge says, yes, I'm getting there. I'm almost survived. I just started day 25. We finished day 24 a few minutes ago. Willie John, thank you for the follow. Oh. You must go reset your tired brain. Okay, good luck. Have a good rest. We'll see you later. Thanks again, talk a bit. Ah, uh, Perkinji, uh, thank you for the follow. Aster, Aster rather, thank you for the follow as well. Um, right, we got the phone number of the deep sea marine biologist on a handwritten note taped to the wall of some marine's cockpit. Sea cucumbers, yeah, they're probably hunting for food. But don't worry, they're predictable critters. They move in perfectly straight lines only moving forward when there's space to do so. They're actually quite polite. Quang Bui, uh, my AOC is, uh, my ranking is zero. I, I don't actually start, um, I don't start Advent of Code until the morning after it's released, so I won't see it. Swartzen, Swartzen Nielsen, thank you for the follow. Schwatzen, Schwatzen Nielsen. Thank you. Um, let's take a look at my ranking. Uh, on, on, my, on the Toggle Bits leaderboard, we can take a look at that. Where am I? I'm down here, number seven. And I'm almost finished. I'm getting close. Am I up solving? Um, does that mean I'm solving after the problems have already been done? Or no, this is the first time I'm looking at this. So I'm not trying to do code golf and I'm not trying to do speed. I'm just trying to solve. Diablo D3 says, so what are we looking at? We are looking at Advent of Code Day 25. I'll put a link in the, in the chat in case you'd like to check that out. That username at one, who's at one? I didn't see. Dr. Nefario, yes. Um, if you if you go on um, on Togglebit's Discord, you'll see all the rankings there. All right. Um, right. You explain that you'd like to predict when you could land your submarine. Oh, that's easy. They'll eventually pile up and leave enough space for. Her. Wait, did you say submarine? And the only place with that many sea cucumbers will be at the very bottom of the marinara mariana i said marinara because somebody else did once a long time ago and i thought it was funny and now i just say marinara trench <clears throat> the mariana trench do you see cucumbers live at the bottom of the mariana trench yeah marinara trench I don't think, oh, yes, look at that, small sea cucumbers. Holothurians, which are, um, I'm sure, going to be the next Doctor Who villain. <laughs> Marinara Trench and the mozzarella bread bowl, yeah. Very good. All right, so there are two herds of sea cucumbers sharing the same region. I, I would have thought it would be too deep for creatures to live down there. But I, I am pleasantly surprised um, that uh, small sea cucumbers can can make a home down there. It sounds like a Harry Potter title. 
Harry Potter and the uh, mozzarella bread bowl. Solve days 25 so I can hear your explanation and suffering. Okay, let's do that. There are two herds of sheep cucumbers sharing the same region. One always moves east while the other always moves south. Each location can contain at most one sea cucumber and the remaining locations are empty. Submarine helpfully generates a map of the situation. Your puzzle input. For example, so we have a little 10 by 10. How big is our, oh, look at this description here. Let's get my uh, puzzle input. It's big, I'm guessing it's, um, what, 100 by 100? Let's, let's save it and see. Day 25.txt. Okay. And it's in downloads right now. 137 lines. Okay. So it's not 100 by 100 uh, inputs. There. Okay. It is now in place. Let's close this little guy down here. Let's close this window over here. And what was it? Down into the right? A south. East into the south. Each location can contain at most one sea cucumber. The remaining locations are empty. Submarine helpfully generates the map. Every step, the sea cucumbers in the east-facing herd attempt to move forward one, and then the sea cucumbers in the south-facing herd attempt to move forward one. When a herd moves forward, every sea cucumber in the herd first simultaneously considers whether there is a sea cucumber in the adjacent location it's facing, and then every sea cucumber facing an empty location simultaneously moves into that location. Okay, that's right. So only this guy can move forward, but now two of them can move forward, and then three, then four. I got it. During a single step, the east-facing herd moves first, then the south-facing herd moves. So with this, east-facing goes first. He can go here, or she, or they. They can go there. This one can't move. And then the two south-facings can go down because this one left a space and this one already had a space. Okay. Due to strong weather cur water currents in the area, sea cucumbers that move off the right edge of the map appear on the left edge. <laughs> okay. And the sea cucumbers that move off the bottom edge of the pier on the top edge. Okay. Sea cucumbers always check whether their destination location is empty before moving, even if that destination is on the opposite side of the map. Got it. To find a safe place to land, your submarine and sea cucumbers need to stop moving. All right, so I'm going to guess we're going to run with test input first to see if after 58 steps things stop moving. Find somewhere safe to land your submarine. What's the first step on which no sea cucumbers move? Okay. So let's save this as our input for test day 25. Oops. Didn't want to do any of that. I mean, cat greater than. There we go. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how we're going to, how we're going to model this, and I'm going to use a hash map because I do. Uh, we need create uh, utils read file. Let data equals read file of test. Oh, inputs test day 25 and then we're going to say for D and data um, I guess we need to have a width and length let width is data 0 dot len and let height is equal to data dot len stack 1977 thank you for the follow 1977 was a good year that's the year uh, Star Wars came out the first one um, okay, so now we're going to break this down into, for C and D, chars. Ah, Sama, Samaru Gusto, thank you for the follow. And George Daniel Tinnix, thank you for the follow too. Epic Blog says, I'm learning so much about sea cucumbers. Yeah, they only move south or east, apparently. <coughs> All right. Um, what are we doing? We're, oh, we're going to create a hash map, right? Use standard collections hash map. And the hash map is going to contain 
the location of every sea cucumber. So we, we're going to create a let mud floor. It's going to be, oh, let's create an enum because we now we have three instead of on or off. Before it was like the hashtag or the dot. So we could set it or not set it. Um, we now need uh, cucumber is going to be a right one or a down one or an empty one. And that's going to be our hash map. It's going to be a hash map from XY coordinates. I guess I guess you size you size because we loop around right and it's going to map to a a cucumber yeah. this map says that's until they bump into the north and west moving herds and fight yes <laughs> right very, very clever okay Epic Blog says this Christmas I learned that the Star Wars Christmas special was a thing. I've actually never seen the Star Wars Christmas special. I've seen like a few seconds of it to, to see that it was very poorly produced and I never actually watched it. But maybe maybe I should sit down one day and just say, OK, let's just get through this thing just so I can understand any references to it. All right, so we actually want for y because we want the uh, iter enumerate e enumerate like this, and then char's enumerate, and this will be x comma c, and we'll just say floor uh, insert uh, x comma y gets. Oh, we have to map. See, it's going to get um, it's a dot goes to empty. Uh, I'm going to do this thing like I did last time, Use like this. Empty uh, a v is a down, and a greater than is a right, and anything else is bad input. Um, I guess we can put D here. Sure. Oh, I messed something up. That should be a thing. This needs a closing thing like that. And then we can do that and that. There we go. So we should now be able to parse the input, except there's two errors. What did I miss? That's not properly closed. It's right there. Um, this is properly closed, and this insert's properly closed. Oh, is my stream stopping and starting? Oh, that's not good. It might be related to, might be related to um, the fact that I don't have power here. Hopefully not. Um, I can't tell. Oh, yeah, it says drop frames, 13,000 drop frames. All right, well, if, if that keeps up. You don't think it was me? Uh, all good now, but it did happen once or twice. OK, well, if, if it does happen again, maybe I can I can do day 25 tomorrow. But maybe it was um, Diablo says maybe it was uh, uh, Twitch. It could be. Okay, hopefully, let, let's keep going. Let's power through this. We should be able to print this out now. Um, and let's, let's, yeah, let's create a print function because I'm going to want to see that for this. Oh, for this one, I want to see it, right? This is the big example. So let's say print. Other twin streams you were spying on also halted at the same time. Yeah, okay. Maybe somebody picked up the phone. <laughs> wow. Okay, showing your age. Yeah, I used to I used to dial up on BBSs with a phone back in the olden days. I'm old too. All right, so what do we have? We have a floor with a hash map. Let's create the hash map type so I don't have to type it in each time. Type floor is equal to hash map of u size, u size to cucumber. 
and then just we'll save that here. Floor. And we'll put floor. And we'll just, oh, we need a width and a height. Uh, width, new size, and height, new size. And we can just print it out. Four, y in zero dot dot height. Four x in zero dot dot width. And we're just gonna print match floor dot get x y unwrap. Probably needs a star in front of it. Um, I'm gonna say empty gets print of dot. Uh, right gets um, gets a print of greater than, and a down gets a print of. Oh, why did I do that? Greater than and v like that. CompuServe, haven't heard that forever. I can still remember my CompuServe ID. 73757, 2623. Uh, I have the card somewhere. Um, and then after this, Printlin, like that. And that should work, right? So I should just be able to say print floor. And that fails. Oh, because that needs to be a semicolon. And that fails. It is collections. I can never remember if it's. Oh, and then we need the width and the height. Okay. There we go. Let's run that. Okay. Does that look right? Okay. So I think we're parsing it correctly. So now all we need to do is write the code to take one step. Step floor. Um, which is going to be a uh, mutable reference to a floor. Oh. Yeah, we can do that. And with, otherwise we create a, um, we turn a whole new floor and then reset it. Epic Blog says a few of us here are raising the average age of chat substantially. Yeah. Lumicode, thank you for the uh, follow. Thank you very much. I'm up to 91 followers, almost hitting that uh, magic 100 mark. I don't think there's anything magic about it, <clears throat> but there it is. It's magic 100 mark. Height, new size. And I think what I'll do is uh, as we mutate, I'm thinking about, you know, should we I return a floor here? Or should I just mutate the existing floor? Or should I just, I think, I think what I want to do is just say floor.clear. And then floor, can you do this extend? How does it work with hash maps of the new floor? We'll do something like that. Uh, Smab says, I raise it far too much. I used to use Janet. I, I never actually used that. Um, I've heard of it, but I've never actually used it. Easter Aether says, my father still talks about having to program with punch cards. Yeah. Back in the olden days, those were uh, those were interesting. I've seen I've seen punch cards. I've never actually uh, gotten a chance to use any. <clears throat> so let's create a new floor. Equals, which is a type floor. Hash map new. And now what we'll do is we'll loop over the floor. What we need to do is everything. What was it? East first. Every step, the sea cucumber is in the east-facing herd attempt to move forward. Okay, so we're going to look east first. For um, position and, oh, yeah, position and type in floor like this. So we have a position which is going to have an x, y. Uh, x, y equals pause. Um, and we're going, to we're going to go east first. So if if is not equal to um, is a right cucumber, we can just continue because we only care about those. 
Um, okay, so now we have the xy coordinate. We want to increment uh, x. We want to say x plus equals. Oh, x is equal to x plus 1 mod width. If floor dot contains key x y then we do nothing otherwise our new floor oh and we don't want to do nothing and we don't want to do nothing here we want to put because we're trying to set up the new floor so the new floor insert we're going to insert the cucumber in that position um, if floor contains key x y then we're going to insert the new into the new floor that that guy otherwise we're going to put into the new floor insert x y of the cucumber that we just found right that should shift everything east um, except we can't do equality on this guy yet Expected a tuple found reference. So let's dereference it. Also. Okay, and then down here, we do a here and a here. And this is going to be here. And now we can't do that. Um, that's a Y, and that's a Y. Oh, and I hit F1. Um, now we can't do it because we're moving. Oh, okay. Let's just make this a reference. And it already is a reference. I shouldn't need to double reference it. Uh, do I reference these guys? Matt three one four, thank you for the follow. This expression has, yeah, and types differ in mutability. Okay. Really, it's got a mutable cucumber. Well, it seems to be it seems to be doing the trick anyway. Let's see if we, now I remove all these stars and then it, it blows up in a completely different way. Yeah, data moved. I don't want to move the data. I don't want to move the data. I just want to loop over the, 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 the hash map. Let me loop over the hash map. Matt, Matt says, good luck. I survived three days of AOC with Rust. Well, I've gotten through 24 days so far. And now I'm, I'm starting to fail on day 25 here just because I can't loop over a freaking hash map. What's going on here? If I do this, it, everything blows up because it's going to be, yeah, expected tuple found this. And if I put a star here, then, yeah, everything blows up because then everything gets moved. This is just mismatched types, but then somewhere down here, it's going to complain about moving. And this wasn't supposed to be difficult. All right, so what if I just say, I'm not going to gra grab a mutable floor. I'll just grab a reference, and I'll just return a new floor. And that way I don't do this. I just re-say new floor. It still doesn't like it. Because I have to put stars in front of each one of these things. And I can't compare those, but that's fine. I'll just star that, star that, star that, and now what blows up? Cannot move. move. Oh. It's because it's behind a shared reference. 
Do I have to actually say dot clone? This that would be sad. Yeah, you, you can't. Oops, star clone. If this seriously works, I'm going to be annoyed because yeah, okay, it doesn't. All right, let's get rid of the clones. Let's get rid of that. I'm not sure what the right answer is here. General Nova says I prefer apple pie. Apple pie is good. Uh, Matt says I tried a AOC 20 in Rust and it hit a wall because of my permanent brain damage from functional programming and not being able to use Windows on any kind of iterator. You do, there is a Windows, um, and I think I used that in day one. Um, was it day one? Yeah, here. You can, so you can do Windows. Maybe that's n new or recent. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Uh, only on slices, and I had some issues with getting it to work on strings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me. Maybe you have to go like a string.chars.windows or something like that. Uh, to get the um, to get the individual characters out, and General Nova wants pie, the Greek letter flavored pie. Okay, I don't know the right approach for this then, unless we just say for y and height. <laughs> this is bad. I should be able to loop over the thing. And then just say floor dot get let equals floor star floor get of x and y unwrap. All right, I'm going to do it this way. This should work. Um, although this is annoying if I if this is really the way it has to be done. Yeah, and now I don't have position. So this should be um, x, y. And position here should be x, y. Oh, now I can't mutate. I can't mutate this. Um, I'll say new, new x. Go away. And this should be a new X, and this should be a new X, and then this should be a new X, right? Oh no, if it contains key, then we want to insert, insert it at where it belongs. These go away, this goes away, that star goes away, and tell me what fails now. We can't do this now. Move occurs because, which does not implement copy trait. Okay, well, we can give it the copy trait. And, of course, if you have copy, you need clone. Okay. My God. All right, so we, now we should be able to call step. <laughs> oh, this is only doing the rights. We're not, we haven't even considered downs yet. All right, well, let's see if that works. We should be able to see if, if any changes occur, right? So we should be able to say um, floor equals step of floor with height and then print floor with height. Let's print a new line in between them so we can see the difference. Otherwise it'll all blend together. Astro says seeing these error fixes give me hope. Yeah, I mean, this this is very much a Rust learning stream. I mean, I, I'm learning Rust as I'm doing this, so I'm sure that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this will also help other people learn because I really enjoy Rust and I just want to... Okay, I don't see any... So we were just doing writes and nothing changed. This should have moved over by one, right? And it didn't. So let's see what went wrong. If the cucumber is not equal to right, then we'll insert it onto new floor. And 
the old one and continue. We increment x. If floor contains something in that position, then we're going to just put something, put it back. Otherwise, we're going to put it in its new position. Oh, and I didn't have to do all of this. I could have just said right here because it, it writes. All right. This seems like the right thing to do. Um, Printlin uh, XY moves to XY. And it's going to be XY, new X, new, not new Y. Just that. Okay, let's run this and see what we get. Nothing. We got nothing. Okay, so it's never equal to right. But it is. I mean, when we print it out, we're seeing some. All right, this will generate a lot of output, but we can at least print it out. We have to derive the bug, so we can print it out, and this will generate a lot of output, hopefully. Oh. Let's just save and quit, and then go here. Here's a right, right there. Um, okay, maybe it's finding something. Oh, uh, C. Southern says, iterate over immutable borrow of the map. So if I do an ampersand star map, that might be able to do it. All right. Well, let me figure out what the bug is, and then I can try that. This is saying if, if the floor contains something where we're trying to go, then stay in the same spot. Oh, contains key. I don't want contains key. Of course, it's going to contain key. It's going to have it. It's going to have a, um, a key of empty there. So what we should do is say floor get unwrap equals empty. Is not equal to empty. There we go. All right. So let me get rid of all these prints now, and I don't need this moves anymore because I think that was the bug. And it panicked. Um, environment variable um, none on value. Every location should have a I'm assuming it's this location here, because the height and the width should all exist. New X could be an edge, but I, I moved it around. It's the line 42 it's complaining about. And it did wrap around to zero. Line 42. Oh, over here, when we print out. Oh, I must not be inserting all the locations. That must be what's happening. So X and width. Oh, I have to put an empty spot on the new floor where we left. I think that was the, that's the problem. Yeah, okay, so did this work? No, it did not. Because th there's two up here, and there should be there should be one here, right? That's where the the new guy should be. Huh?
Hmm. We're not moving it. We are moving it. We gotta insert every single location. The new floor here. Oh, I wonder if it's if it's because like this guy can't move, so he stays he stays there. This guy can move. He's yeah, he inserts his new location. But we don't wanna um we don't wanna kill it. Knight MT, thank you for the follow. Alright. Let's, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think what might be going wrong here is that we're, we're clearing out something that may have already moved into that location. We shouldn't. But what if we, what if we get rid of this, uh, the idea of having an empty, have, having just a right and a down, and then just using the keys to, t to tell us if, Let me get rid of this empty. And instead of doing this, oh, then we have to change. Yeah, that's that's fine. We'll just say nothing here. And then print. Um, we can do this. None is going to be empty. And then some right and some down. That should work for that. I think I can do that. And now, um, yeah. What if we what if we um, iterate now? We'll try to iterate over the. Um, the, the thing like like uh, was suggested earlier we can actually destructure the whole thing x y and the cucumber in what was it like this floor and make that mutable again okay all right so now we have, don't have to do this. We'll just say if um, C is equal to a down, then we don't have to do anything because there's nothing to put in there. We'll worry about the downs after we take care of all the rights. Um, so our new X location is here. And now we can do contains key again. Right, because now now it'll be empty if it's not there and a new X and Y like that yeah this this looks a little bit simpler and then the new floor insert we want to put it put it where it is right and continue and then otherwise we do this Okay, does that check? It does not. Uh, it doesn't like this to do nothing. I expected an enum cucumber. Oh, um, if C is equal to dot, continue. Otherwise we do that. Okay, and now I can't pass in a mutable floor. And then this is where everything breaks down, right? We need stars everywhere. For the Y, ah, 
the y, for the c, for the y, for the x, and for the y, and for the c. All right, that checks, and now let's see if we can move to the right. All right, so this looks like it worked, right? We got all the rights, and we'll worry about the downs in the, in the next phase. One happy balloon, thank you very much for the follow. Okay, I think, I think this did the trick, right? After one step, and now we have, yeah. Yeah. And that guy looped around from here to the here. Okay, so we're able to get this, the, um, the right right. Let's get the downs right. So now we need to loop over this again. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna do the mutate thing again. I, I want really wanted to do that floor clear, and what was it again? Extend. I think. Yeah, and we're not gonna return the floor anymore. Um, right. So now, let's take a look. Let's do the same exact loop because that this one worked. Thank you. Um, I forgot who who suggested that. Um, to, to, to do that. Oh, Sothan. Thank you for the, uh, for the idea of doing it that way. That seems to have done the trick. Okay, so now, um, we'll do something similar. If C is right, I'm just copying this code here. We don't care about it because we already handled it. And then we're going to say let new Y equals star y plus one mod height um, and then if oh now we need to check to see because all the east's moved into new floor so we have to check the new floor it contains key um, of star x and new y or new flu new floor or if the current floor <clears throat> if the current floor has a down mm, I can't just say contains key let's just say current floor equals dang it I'm trying to think of how did how to phrase this we want to say if it if the current floor not the new floor if the current floor has a down T cucumber we can't move to it if the new floor contains a right C cucumber we can't move to it but how do we check to see? So I, I mean, I can say floor, floor dot get um, the star x and new y, right? Unwrap. But if there's nothing there, the unwrap is going to fail. And if I don't do it, the curve floor will be none. So I could just say let sum. Then if that's that or curve floor was down then we just we don't want to do anything we'll say new floor insert of um, X and Y we're gonna put it we're gonna put the uh, the down cucumber back and we're not moving him um, else then we have to do the same exact logic except without the uh, additional curve floor thing so there's, there's got to be a simpler way to do that let's, so let's pull this out and we can do that and that and that and that maybe 
GRM, thank you for the follow. Um, oh, maybe maybe this, like this. Right, we say if the floor contains, if the new floor contains a key. No, that's not right. I think I think this was right. If the new floor contains a key there, then we have to see um, or if this is true. This should be the else. Right. So if the new floor contains a key there, then we want to do this and continue. If here we go. Okay, this makes more sense. If the old floor contains a down, then we don't want to go there. Right? Because if we have two down or three downs in a row like we have over here, we'll look down and say there's a down down there, we can't move. But if there's nothing below us, so that continues, then all we do now is on the new floor, insert um, star x and new y uh, of our our cucumber, and let's do that. Let's run that for one step. Oops, I'm missing some close print somewhere. It should tell me which one, right? Here. Uh, line 74. No, that, lo that looks right. Oh, is it here? Yeah, here. There we go. Oh, that was hard to spot. Uh, it still didn't work, though. There. There were two of them. I did, I did it twice. Oh, and now we're not returning this, right? We're just going to step. <clears throat> okay. And now we have a failure. Oh, I, I'm ampersand. It should be a star. What else? Expected a tuple. Oh, we're doing an insert, so we need to do it without the ampersand. Same with this guy. And same with this guy. And that should be a star. And this should be a star. And this should be a star. Okay. So now let's run this one step and see if this this should go to this, right? All right. That first line looks fine. The last line looks fine. This middle line looks fine. I think, I think this is it. Everything, everything looks good. All right. So let's run it a bunch of cell. Let's run it 58 steps. Oh, we need to figure out when to stop. <coughs> I completely forgot about that. So let's just return a bool of whether or not we moved. Let mut moved is false. Uh, and then anytime we move, we'll just set it to true. Um, where else? Down here. And then we just return moved. So now we should be able to loop um, 58 times. You should be able to say a while step. But this might infinite loop us, right? Okay. Well, let's try it. What's the worst that could happen? Besides getting blocked. Ah. Oh, and then I got to print out how many times we, we did it. Did, is this right? This looks right. Hmm. 
Yes, this all looks right. Okay. Um, so we just need to count. Let uh, mod count equals zero. If we took a step, then count plus equals one. And we'll just say we don't need to print these things out anymore. We can just say A25 part one is this count. Let's run it. And of course, we have an off by one error. It should be 58, we see 57. Um, why? We have the initial state. We do a step. If the step succeeded, we count. Oh, we're checking to see the state where it doesn't move. So we need, we're not counting this extra step here where it doesn't move. OK. Well, that's easy to fix. All we do is start at 1. Done. All right. We'll run this. And now we have a print that doesn't, doesn't work or isn't needed. That's OK. Um, so we got 58. I'm going to change this here. Oops. This is kind of cheating, but it'll, it'll eliminate that warning. OK, now let's use the real input. Run that. And we hit an infinite loop. All right, so I need to kill this. Oh, we didn't hit any fill. We just had a very slow 10 seconds of. Seems suspiciously the round number. It's the right answer, though. That's good news. OK. It was very slow, 10 seconds. All right, it took a half a second in release mode, so that's a little nicer. And it's probably just building all those hash maps and then copying and deleting them. But this is good news. We got we got the um, that's the suspiciously right answer. Matt says yes. All right, so let's see what part two is. Uh, let's check this in. Day twenty-five, part one. And I think part two is just you're done. Uh, if everything holds true from the previous uh, AOCs. Suddenly, the experimental antenna control console lights up. Slay keys detected. According to the console, the keys are directly under the submarine. You landed right on them. Using a robotic arm on the submarine, you move the slay keys into the airlock. Now you just need to get them to Santa in time to save Christmas. You check your clock. It is Christmas. Uh, it was when this puzzle was released. There's no way you can get them back to the surface in time. Just as you start to lose hope, you notice a button on the sleigh keys. Remote start. You can start the sleigh from the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> miles away. You just need some way to boost the signal, OK, from the keys so it actually reaches the sleigh. Good thing the submarine has that experimental antenna. You'll definitely need 50 stars. Yeah, see, this is saying, OK, you have to solve all the other ones. Energy source detected. Integrating energy source from device sleigh keys. Recalibrating. Boost the strength. Due to matching signal, signal saves, one star. So I just need the other 49 stars, which, which, which I have. I've got 49 stars right there. OK. So I have enough stars to remotely start the engine. Let's do it. Very nice. You use all 50 stars to boost the signal and remotely start the sleigh. Now you just have to find your way back to the surface. Did you know crab submarines come, come with colored lights? I've finished every puzzle at the end of code 2021. Hope you had as much fun solving them. Okay, so now we can check the calendar. Usually he does a little something fancy with the calendar. Oh yeah, you see the little lights are moving. Vaguely back and forth. Um, a little nice little animation to, to round out the day. Okay, that was fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, Day 22 was, was really tough for me until a friend of mine gave me a hint. Um, but we're there. Did I read about the Easter egg map? Says I, I have seen Easter eggs in previous 
ones, but yeah, I know that you, know, you can go to, um, and after you solve everything, yeah, see, he underlines this. So now if you hover over it, does this premise seem fishy to you? I would make a little pun there. Um, what Easter eggs are here? Here we go. Let the giant squid win. Yeah, that was a Star Wars reference, wasn't it? It's because submarines don't pull things and pull things antennas out of their sockets when they lose. Giant squid are known to do that. Yeah. So another. Oh, and I can't. I can't zoom in the, the hover text. Oh well. One of the few in the project. Yeah. I don't know how many people finish every year, but I know there are a lot. I haven't. I haven't finished every year. I've only got. I mean, I. I should say that previous events I solved under a different account. So I have solved others, just not all of them. So I was one of the things I was thinking of doing um, maybe in February or March or something was just start again, start from 2015 and fill all these in t until 2022 comes around. That would be fun to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's take a look at the stats. How many people have solved? So 8,000 people have, have finished, oops. 8,000 people have finished um, all 25, or yeah, all 25 days for Advent of Code 2021. Yeah, and previous years have done. Um, let's 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 look at 2015. So only 4,000 there, so I can add to that number. 2016, oh wow, less than 3,000. And then I think it starts going up as as it as it became more and more popular. Oh wow, no, it didn't. Nineteen? Wow. And then twenty twenty. So twenty twenty was a big year. So we got thirteen thousand. I don't know how many solved it on that day. Uh, but a lot of people went back and it became very popular. So I'm expecting twenty twenty one to have a similar, if not higher, number by, by this time next year. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to do, Esther, 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 Esther says it could be fun, uh, I assume, to do them all, and it gives others a way to try to do it too. One of the things I was thinking of doing also was just creating a library of routines, useful routines. Um, you know, we got we have all these grid problems, we have the Dijkstra problems, we have various sorts of problems that come up again and again, and it would be nice to have a utility. I did create a utilities file anticipating doing that, but it only has one thing in it to, to just read the file into a bunch of lines uh, so I could get the input. I didn't have to write this code over and over again. <laughs> so it wasn't as exciting, but I, I figured maybe a nice little utility library might make it fun to do 2022 using that utility library and see how it goes. All right, that is going to wrap up my stream. Um, it's another three hour stream nearly. Um, and I don't normally stream more than two hours, so my voice is really going. Um, Rafael Luba is doing some streaming. Let's see what he's, uh, let me pause my music so I can listen to what uh, he's up to, and then maybe we can all go raid him. Uh, let me pull him up on my... Oh, who did that? Let me take a look at the follow. Uh, Sothan, thank you. Thank you for the follow. All right, right now I'm watching an ad. Uh, so as soon as the ad's over, let's see how far he, he's been streaming for about an hour and a quarter. So we can raid him, right? What's he working on? He's programming a debugger from scratch. He's been working on it for a while now. I hope he's uh, doing well. So let us go raid him. Uh, meanwhile, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. Esther, Esther, thank you for uh, stopping by. Yeah, Tacklebit has gotten me quite a number of, of uh, follows, and I appreciate that very much. Okay. Uh, with that being said, thank you very much, and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, take care, everyone.